So the usual suspects are out defending President Trump's budget, including his Secretary of State and budget director. We'll start with Rex Tillerson, who on State Department cuts says, clearly the level of spending that the State Department has been undertaking, particularly in this past year, is simply not sustainable. As time goes by, there will be fewer military conflicts that the US will be directly engaged in. Uh, he went on to say, I'm confident that with the input of the men and women of the State Department, we are going to construct a way forward that allows us to be much more effective, much more efficient, and be able to do a lot with fewer dollars, which means nothing. Uh, and let's also show uh, the director of management and budget office, Mick Mulvaney, uh, who was on Morning Joe offering a nice, nice little spin uh, to this story. It's 54 billion more to defense, a big military buildup, yeah. and cuts to programs that affect a lot of people in this country, including the Department of Education, the EPA, and the environment. How do you defend that? Um, you could put those graphs back on the screen if you wanted to, and you could, I could point to you speeches that the president gave during the campaign that said exactly those things. In fact, that's how we wrote the budget. We went back and pulled lines out of speeches, out of interviews, talked to the president, and turned his, his words, his policies into numbers. So folks who voted for the president are getting exactly what they voted for. We're peeling away after school programs. We're hitting public schools. I know some of that money is being diverted into charter schools, into ch school choice. But do you see why people would be upset by that? Do sure. we need another F-35 and not have after school programs? Don't get me wrong, there's, there's waste in the Defense Department as well. But when you start talking about priorities, okay, the President's priorities were national defense, homeland security, taking care of veterans, school choice, and that's what we have. When you start looking at the places that will reduce uh, spending, one of the questions we asked was, can we really continue to ask a coal miner in West Virginia or a single mom in Detroit to pay for these programs? The answer was no, we can ask them to pay for defense, and we will. Make no mistake about it, this is a hard power budget, not a soft power budget. That is what the president wanted, and that's what we gave him. Lord. So let me get this right. Uh, we can't afford to ask people to pay for their kids' education, like an after school program. That was the literal example that was given right to his face. No, we can't expect coal miners to pay for their kids' education. But a, a giant multi-billion dollar contract to Lockheed Martin, well, of course we're gonna make coal miners pay for that. But but also, <laughs> we, can't, we can't expect that, but we could expect low-income people, uh, the former middle class of America, to pay for your uh, wealthy donors' tax cuts, because yeah. somebody's paying for them. And, and then you also add in, when, Trump's not adding all this money to defense just to you know sit there still. Who's going to pay for the wars? He eventually goes to. We know what happened under Bush. Yet deep tax cuts, wars on the credit card. Years later, not directly connected, but a financial crash. We we've done this before, and we know the results and the lives. Right. Whether I mean now that you don't have all these other programs, because at least we had some of these programs under Bush. You know, when when a coal miner gets cancer, how are they going to cover that? When you don't have research and development for, for the PTSD, for, for those vets that come back and need assistance, what are they gonna do? I mean, we already have a problem. It's, we're, 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 we're not out of 2008 yet. We are still deep in, and I respect Obama in a lot of ways, but for him to take credit for rebounding this country, the middle class does not exist anymore, and we're going to slash it even more. Like, How do we rebound after that? How do we rebound after the next four years? Yeah, well, I, I don't know, man. If he if this if these priorities that are in this budget actually get instituted and take effect for four years, uh, that is going to be a hole that is going to be so hard to climb out of. Tom Perez will save us. Well, well, that's what I was about to say because you know, yes, this is from Trump, but the Democratic Party should be out going the extreme opposite yep. way. We need single payer. We need free public college tuition. Yep. What are they doing? Trump's evil. Uh, we, we need to take down Trump, donate, donate. Uh, the DNC email is coming tonight, folks. I will, I will report and update you. So yes, this is coming from Trump, but the Democratic Party doesn't have an alternative. We'll get to you know, Bernie a little bit later. But uh, so tr Trump is obviously the culprit behind this and his donors, but what are the Democratic Party putting forward? It's interesting you say that because I'm on their messaging list and as I'm sure you are too. And they send out massive blasts every day to, to the press of what we should cover and they attach articles. And it is all about Trump being a racist, the Muslim ban, Russia, nothing else. They don't talk about the economy, they don't talk about school choice, which we'll talk about later because they're invested in it. They don't talk about the budget, they're not even talking about the budget today. 
None of those emails they sent today were about the budget. And that's the thing, like Democrats have a role to play in crafting the budget theoretically. It's not outside their purview to be involved in how this thing is crafted. We all know that Trump is not an ideological conservative. So if he sees, perceives some political advantage in maybe modifying something here and including something that's important to Democrats, you could conceivably see him capitulating under certain circumstances. And yet it seems like Democrats are just willing to forego any, any semblance of that and just defer to Trump and the Republicans in managing this process, which is unfortunate. And, and who at this table actually thinks Trump read this budget <laughs> or wrote anything in the budget? He only no. he only asked for one pagers with bullets. It came right. from his speeches. No, <laughs> no, but that's actually why I think Mulvaney mentioned the speeches, right? Because they didn't actually confer with him on the specifics. It, <laughs> like, look, even on the on the intelligence briefings, he's supposed to get every day. Most important thing, he he says keep it to one page, and he likes graphs and maps. So you think you read this giant budget? No, so their way of saying we conferred with them is we conferred with the, the Trump of ghost past, the, you know, and, and so we looked at the campaign footage and said, I think that's what he wants. <laughs> I just love the idea of Mick Mulvaney sitting on YouTube and like going back and watching old speeches and like pulling his hair out and trying to see how he can translate that into a budget proposal. It's pretty funny. But also, <laughs> even that is not true. I, I must have gone to at least 15 to 30 Trump rallies and I'm still recovering. And let me tell you something. He did not specify, Oh, I'm going to cut the EPA by 30%. He just talked in broad strokes. So, you know, yes, they could say, Oh, we're doing what we said we were going to do. But he was not stipulating to, you know, what Steve Bannon said, we're going to, you know, get rid of the administrative state. I mean, the voters probably wouldn't have cared anyway if he said that, but he did not go in depth about these. I want to also get to another aspect of this, our favorite climate change denier, James Inhofe. Uh, he responded to President Trump's budget. $0.6 billion cut away from the EPA, that's what the president wants. This is the agency that, as you know, regulates a lot of things in this country, including protecting clean water, protecting against things like what happened in Flint, Michigan. Are you comfortable with this cut? Is this a good cut for the American people? Oh, yeah, it's a good cut for the American people. You got to keep in mind now. Uh, all these functions that they're supposed to be performing in terms of the clean air, the clean air act, it, it's the nature, Poppy, of a bureaucracy. If you cut their, their budget, then they're going to try to take the things that are popular back mm. home and cut those. Well, so, I, I would be concerned about that, except now we have a different budget uh, director of the EPA. Uh, no, he, he'll figure out a way to do it. We want to deliver the services, we're going to make things clean, but we're going to take the, the, all this stuff that comes out of the EPA that's bringing washing our kids that is uh, propaganda, things that aren't true, uh, yeah. allegations. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> In defending Scott Pruitt, uh, who is overseeing the uh, internal implosion of the EPA, uh, he said later, uh, I know this guy, I know him well. Is that a compliment or a <laughs> criticism? <laughs> but the reason that he frames it that way is because in Washington circles, Policy never matters. Are you polite to the people around you and the cocktail circuit matters? So that's Inhofe saying, hey, you've seen me, we've had martinis together. And I'm, I'm vouching for Pruitt, he's a, I know him. I know him well, if I know him, that's good enough. Mm -hmm. So let's go slash all those budgets and uh, and pour toxic sludge into the, your local rivers and stuff. It's, I mean, it's not your local river in Washington, right? right. It's a yeah. local <laughs> river in North Dakota or Arkansas or but, whatever. But he's not just a, like an idiot. He also has been in uh, the Senate in office for a while because he gets a lot of cash from the uh, energy and oil uh, industries. So people like him, yes, they're ignorant and stupid, but they're also uh, taking in huge hordes of cash uh, from the same people uh, that they are saying are, uh, well, uh, working against the brainwashing, as he calls it. So it, it's, it, it's idiocy, ignorance, and greed all in one. Sounds great. <laughs> yes. <laughs> of all the departments of the government to be concerned about in terms of the propaganda that it puts forward, <laughs> The EPA seems like a misguided one to fixate on, but we wouldn't really expect anything else from Senator Inhofe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, no, the Defense Department, they don't do any propaganda. No, no. Not. God forbid we should talk about that. But the EPA with all that propaganda about how we need clean air and clean water. Super you gotta really watch out for that. Who needs to clean up a super fun site? Right. Yeah, no, that's one of the cuts. I mean, I look, I'm so Chicago. Glad, yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up, Norman, because Super fun sites are literally disastrous, right? They're literally toxic. If you got a super fun site around you and he just said, I'm not gonna ever clean it up. Are you, if you know anything of what's going on, you gotta be furious about that. 
he says, no, 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 I'm doing it to protect you. You know, we need that, uh, we need another couple of aircraft carriers and more F-35s to protect you from terrorists who sometimes take over planes with, you know, just- Wire cutters. You know, just, a, yeah, exactly. And, and, and even the terrorists who do the attacks and stuff like that, how's an F-35, like the San Bernardino, right? Mm -hmm. Guy goes in and shoots up his office space. How's an F-35 gonna help you with that? Mm -hmm. The F-35 helps Lockheed Martin, Boeing, Raytheon, those guys mm -hmm. who are giant donors. But meanwhile, the Superfund site is right next to you. There's a Great Lakes restoration project. Mm -hmm. They're gonna cut it in this amazing comical cut. Its budget is $300 million. They're gonna cut it to just $10 million. They're taking away $290 million. Now, I didn't know this, and this is amazing. I feel bad I didn't know it. That it turns out that is 84% of North America's surface wet, fresh water supply. Yep. We might want to protect that, that seems like a pretty big deal. In fact, for the whole world's supply of surface fresh water, it's 21% of the whole world's surface fresh water. Like, protect that, no, 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 we gotta build more weapons. I mean, it's almost as if they took Eisenhower's quote and flipped it on right. his head, right? right? Yeah. For every child of yours that we educate or protect, for every air we clean and every water we clean, we can't afford another aircraft carrier. Right. Come on. <laughs> but but really, another element here is this is really big oil's last stand. And President Trump knows that, Inhofe knows that. That's what I saw at Dakota Access Pipeline. They are taking extreme measures by cutting the EPA this far, by basically paying off the police to brutalize mm -hmm. uh, environmentalists and Native Americans, because the numbers are the numbers. Wind and solar are getting bigger and bigger. They're also uh, rivaling jobs uh, to the oil and gas industry, as we've seen But they're cutting recently. those tax benefits for, for them as well. Right. To, to go back to the, the, there's an interesting aspect to this Great Lakes region. There's a congressman named uh, he, Chris Collins, he's from Buffalo, outside of Buffalo. He was the first congressman to endorse Donald Trump. And he is somebody who is actively, this is somebody who says he's gonna turn out turn around Buffalo, he's been campaigning on this propaganda. And now he is actively working with Donald Trump to make sure that that region, which has a lot of Superfund sites also, is devastated because they're not investing in, in the Great Lakes region anymore. Bring back those jobs. By the way, it affects eight states near the Great Lakes. I don't, okay. I don't know if you know any American geography, but those are pretty critical states that Trump won. So this is what I meant earlier in the in the live show when we were talking about how he didn't have to cut this much because his own voters don't actually care about the deficit. So you're gonna cut the Great Lakes protection near Michigan and Wisconsin? That seems like a pretty bad political idea, but they can't help themselves. They're like, no, we will not protect the water. The only thing that matters is oil. You can help hire investigative reporters that'll chase down stories no one else will. Be the media, tytnetwork.com slash go.